Why the unflat man? Who is it? repeated Armin, a little confused, looking at Van. Van shrugged. His Amun and Silvanus and Pan and the Leishi and Veles and Svirtabor, even the Minotaur perhaps. There is a picture of him as old as 15,000 years in a cave in the Ariège, La Grotte de Trophère, the sorcerer, prancing fellow with antlers and a thumping big dong. Every woman in the room, including the young girls, giggled. Van, said Ali, who grimaced theatrically. Sorry, all these old horned males, what can I say? Van! Anyway, some would say he's the devil too, and Baphomet, and lately just the horned god. It all got twisted about since the Christians started messing with the old deities and the Wiccans just made one big stew of it all to cover all the bases and be on the safe side. I may not be wrong, however. In France the Gauls came to call him Sernunus or Carnanus or Cerunicus, which all simply mean the horned one or the antlered one. I suppose we might go with Sernunus. He smiled. Ali looked at him adoringly. Jean-Pierre scoffed. Wherever you look, there was always a god of the forest, the earth, the water, the god of low places, valleys, sources, meadows. His trees were always small trees, healing trees, the willow, the elder, the rowan, not a sky god, not a war god. He was also, as often as not, a god of agriculture and fertility, and death and healing, even resurrection. Fall, winter and spring, the seasons, nature again. It was easy in the old days to believe in such a divinity, and it was wise to pay tribute to him. Forests, fields, deaths, rebirths, the cycles and forces of nature were rather more central. They still seem central enough in this place, said Edith, smiling. One boat. But why the antlers? asked Josephine. It seems awfully impractical even for a forest god. One gave a wry laugh. It sure is, he said. But then he sobered and added, There has always been something mystical about the stag and his antlers in all the old Indo-European cultures. The stag was important enough to have his own constellation, roughly where modern astronomers place Ophiuchus. The Celts put it nicely, saying that the stag carried the solar disk in his crown. His antlers and his strengths are greatest in the autumn, lost in the winter and emerge again in the spring. He incarnates the death of nature and its awakening. He and Sernunus are avatars of the fall of the death of nature and its rebirth, cycles again. Is that why he sculpted everywhere? asked Armin. Do you like, er, uh, believe in this god? One scratched his graying beard and gave him a roguish grin. Let's put it this way, just on the off chance he's still walking about in these parts, I'd rather not piss him off. <laughs>